Welcome to the Self-Awareness and Self-Compassion Podcast, formerly known as the Full Spectrum Feeling Podcast. I'm your host, Blaise Schwaller, life coach, mom, and former tattoo artist. I help people heal their past, speak their truth, and love the lives that they're living now. Join me here every week for conversations on how to live an imperfect but fully engaged life that embraces all the feels so that you can stretch into your best life while enjoying the you that's here right now. Hello, everybody. I have a question for you today, and it's about where you look for feedback in your life to know if you're on the right track. So I know some people who are really in tune with themselves and their feelings, and they have a sense of feedback from the world about how things are going, where if they're feeling good about it, then they know they're on the right path. And if they're feeling bad about it, they think they're on the wrong path. I find that really awesome, but also might be a little bit misleading sometimes because I know when I look into myself and I'm feeling great about stuff, obviously it's very easy to go, woohoo, everything's great. I feel good about it. I'm going to keep going. But when I feel bad about things, if every time I had a bad feeling about something and thought like, oh, this isn't really going the way that I had hoped or how I wanted, it must be the wrong path. I would never get anything done ever in my life. (laughs) Sometimes we just have to still commit to what we want to do despite the experience that we're having in the outside world. Now here's the trick is that sometimes the world keeps giving you negative feedback and we're waiting for it to feel better or to get more positive before we think that what we're doing is right. So sometimes you are doing the right thing And the world hasn't caught up to you yet and given you the feedback that you're hoping to get. And we give up too soon. So it's like a cautionary tale of like, where do you look for the feedback? And when do you draw the line about how much good or bad you're going to accept before you change your mind about it all? It gets so complicated because we're complicated beings. And we have a lot of desires about how we want to feel about stuff. And we also forget that our feelings influence a great deal of how we're perceiving the feedback that's actually coming to us. So one thing that I tell clients all the time is what you're doing isn't something you've done before. Why do you expect it to feel good and natural? And are you looking for that as your feedback to feel like it's the right thing to do and you should keep doing it? And most of the time we say, yes, I was hoping that one day I'd wake up and feel better about it and it would be easier to do. And the truth is that when we're trying to do new things, like we're in the process of growing, those actions do not feel natural. They actually feel kind of scary. We're confused a lot about how it's supposed to be. So our feedback to ourselves is confusion and discomfort and a little bit scared. And when we feel those things, most of the time, like our whole body is telling us, run away, don't do it. And it's why we end up procrastinating and finding something else to do and not doing the thing because we didn't want to feel annoyed, bored, frustrated, or stuck or under pressure or whatever the bad feeling is that's happening because we don't know how it's supposed to go or we don't like how it's going. And yet there's stuff that we have to do in our lives. If we want to get, you know, a certain result, we know we have to take a certain action and then we get caught up and we're not doing it anyway. So again, I'm going to ask, where do you want to look for the feedback to believe that you're on the right track. And I guess something that I've learned is that most of the time we're looking for positive feedback and we have like real judgmental labels about the feedback that we're getting. So we would consider, you know, coming into a room and it's cluttered and we don't want to deal with the stack of paperwork. For me right now, I've got a stack of sewing that I'm working on and I've got, you know, half clipped up and cut up patterns and there's needles and stuff everywhere, and it's cluttered and annoying. And I don't want to get in there and do it. And yet, I know that I want to sew the thing together and have a garment at the end. I would like to have a shirt. I want to have a pair of jeans. I need to do the action to get the result that I want. And there probably won't be a time where I walk into the room, see the clutter, and go, gosh, it feels great in here. I can't wait to like cut this up and finish this project and pin it together. I also know that part of what I've done is I've picked a challenging pattern for myself that I don't actually understand how to read it. 
So I'm stressed and worried that I've cut something out that I'm going to screw it up. (laughs) And I'm upset on many levels about that where I'm like, oh, did I pick the wrong stuff? Why is the fabric that I'm choosing to work with so stretchy? I mean, it needs to be for this outfit, but maybe I should have started with something more simple. There's a lot of judgment that I throw back at myself. And to me, all of that feels very negative. And when I'm feeling that and I'm receiving it in the room, it does not make me want to do it. It doesn't want me to just finish cutting out the rest of the pieces and start pinning them together and figuring it out. It just makes me want to go ah and run away or start a different one. That also is a huge impulse right now where I'm like, maybe I picked the wrong one to start. I should probably just cut out a different pattern and start pinning that one together. And how many of us have done that where we have something or a bunch of somethings that we want to do? We get started part way. It starts to be harder than we had anticipated. We're not having fun anymore. And rather than getting through the difficult part and learning from it, we just figure we've learned already what we needed to learn. And what we've learned is this is hard and I want to do something easier or the next one will be better. That's what we think we learned. So we kind of give up, leave it, hop on to the next project and start again. And then what happens? I can almost guarantee like you start the next project, it gets just about as far as the first project the same feelings come up of confusion, frustration. It's harder than I thought it was going to be. I don't know what to do. And then we kind of give up. So I think what I would call this podcast is the, you actually do know what to do. Stop doubting yourself (laughs) podcast. Oh my gosh. We need to trust ourselves more. I think that's what it comes down to. When I'm looking at like the mess that I've created, I want to look at it and go, but you started this for a reason. You had a vision. You do need to see it through. Is it going the way you had hoped? No. Does it ever go exactly the way you hoped? No. But have you always made it work out somehow? Yeah, you do. It's going to be okay. You don't have to enjoy every moment of this process to end up with something that's good or decent or even an experience that benefits you in the long run. So I keep telling myself that, and it does help actually to remind myself that I've hit the inevitable inevitable portion of a project where it stops feeling easy, where it starts feeling hard, and that I have gotten through this before. Now, ways that I've gotten through it before, often it's telling other people that that's what I'm working on and giving myself a deadline so that I embarrass myself if I don't do it. So I am guilty of using shame towards myself to make myself get off my butt and finish something. I also look at it and go, you're going to have to do something with this. And you're either going to just put it on a shelf where it'll still be staring at you and you'll still be thinking about it and having to do it and it'll be taking your energy or You can use that same energy to just get through this next phase and call it good. Has that always been successful? I'll be honest and say no, but I'm getting better at choosing that choice more often when I get stuck in projects and when I get stuck in general is to go, guess what? You've just hit the inevitable point where things don't feel so good. Don't expect life to always feel good. And stop looking for it to always feel good. Because if you just go to the next thing that feels better, you're not really making any progress. You're just building a wall around you of this is as far as you go with things. And I don't want to be satisfied with that. I could be satisfied with it, but I'm not. And so what is the thing that has to be done? And I ask myself that question. I go, okay, Blaze, what has to be done in order to get past this block? And there's many options. There's the, you need to get it out of your space. So are you going to get it out of your space by giving up on the project and throwing it away, folding it up and putting it in a box and then hiding it in your closet? Are you going to just kind of fold it up and put it on the chair for later where it isn't really out of your space, but it's not cluttering it up and making it harder for you to do other things? Or are you going to do the thing that you're resisting the most, which is usually the thing that I need to do in order to get past it and grow, which is just finish cutting out the pattern. (laughs) Just do the thing that doesn't feel fun and you don't want to do and you're not sure what to do next because as you finish that, the next step will appear. And I've heard this so many times and I used to think it was kind of wishful thinking and trite to be like, well, if you just take the next step, the next step will appear. You'll know where to put your next foot, but you can't until you take this next step. But I'm finding more and more that it's true and it's pretty sound advice If you don't take a step, you won't know what the next step is. And the reason I'm not taking this step is because I want to know where the next one is ahead of it. 
And then it just becomes you're stuck because you can't know where that next foot's going to go down until you put down the one in front of you. Think about that. Like how many times do you not take a step forward because you're not sure what the step after that step is going to be? It's insecurity. It's us going, well, I don't really know how well it's going to come out. And I don't know if I like that very much. That doesn't feel safe. So I don't want to do it. And certainly if we've invested, so in my sewing project, I've invested time already. I've invested a ton of money into just the materials and all of the stuff that I have to make clothes. Wouldn't it be a waste to not just use that? What am I holding on to it for? Like if I bought it, and I guess some of the things I tell myself is, oh, well, someone else could do it better. Or I should have just bought a shirt that someone else made or hired someone who knows what they're doing to make it better than I could make it. And I am recognize that as I say it as like, you could do that, but it's kind of a cop out because that isn't actually the purpose and why you wanted to make it in the first place. So I come back to like, well, why did I want to make it? And I was like, oh, well, I wanted to make it because I thought it would be fun. And I was like, wah, 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 it's not always fun. Oops. But also because there's a sense of satisfaction that I'd have in having that relationship of my hands working on something and then being able to put it on and wear it in the same way that I feel about making a painting is that I want the satisfaction of getting to the end and going, shit, I made that. That's awesome. I want that feeling, but I don't get to have that feeling if I don't do the work. And that's another thing too, is that, um, instinctively I want things to be fun and to be play and to just flow. And then when it becomes not that I think of it as work And I'm like, wow, what a negative connotation I have about work. What if work is just a physical activity of completing something, moving towards something? And what if I stopped judging about what that experience was like in the moment and allowed myself to make mistakes and correct them and learn stuff and change it? Would I hate the garment that I make more if I have a lot of mistakes? If I'm honest, I'm not going to love it if it's like hideously put together and I don't fix it. But will I have learned something and bring it to the next one? Yeah. It's the same like painting, like every painting you make, you don't love, but sometimes you do. Sometimes you're super proud. And there's something about mm, surrounding yourself with things that you've had more than just a passing relationship with, like something that I pick up and just buy, but never touch again. And it just goes on a shelf. It just sits there. But something that I had to assemble myself and put together, I feel like way more ownership of and more affection towards in a weird way. And I know it's the same with clothing. So I'm like, oh, well, I could do this and I could make it. And what if it turns out to be one of my favorite things, even if I suck at doing the hemming and it's a little weird and I had to fix it or call in help? And my answer to that is that would be okay. Sometimes things that I make end up surprising me and being my favorite thing. I made a skirt years ago because I wanted a heavier skirt for the winter that was like the silk skirt that I had gotten in the summer. And I just said, you know what, I'm just going to lay this um, pattern, like the skirt on top of the heavy fabric. I'm going to cut it out and see what I can do and make it myself. I did. I've had it for like six years and I wear it constantly in the winter. It's my favorite thing. And I get compliments on it that surprise me all the time where people are like, oh, what a wonderful skirt. I'm like, I made that. So that is what I'm going for. That's actually like the goal of the experience, but I need to remember that I don't get to have that in the process of making it. It's kind of something that happens throughout and after. So maybe I'm trying to hit an experience that's for later on the timeline and I'm upset because it isn't happening right now today. And yet it can't happen if I don't do all this other like pre-work to make it happen. Mm. Motivation is such a tough thing, isn't it? So I'm trying to look at the feedback that I'm getting from myself, the feedback that I'm getting just emotionally, the physical response I have to having to sit down and do it. And, you know, things like distraction where I'll be like, oh, I think about going down and pinning this and I'll just find an excuse that I can't focus because the podcast I'm listening to is too distracting and I'm thinking too hard and I'll come up with any bullshit reason to not just sit down and cut the fabric And I actually am planning right now. I'm like, oh, now that I'm talking about it, I'm super motivated. I'm like, as soon as I'm done recording this, I'm just going to cut out the last two pieces because that is actually what's holding me back is literally cutting two pieces of fabric. Once I have them, I can start pinning and seeing where it goes together and I will figure it out. And I know this. So this is the way that you can bolster yourself back up as well as to go, well, I do know what to do. 
And that's what I'm doing right now is saying, but after this is cut, I do know what to do. I do know how to do the next step. I'm just preventing myself from getting there because I'm annoyed at how difficult it has been to get this fabric to cut without pulling it weird. Oh, well, boohoo, Blaze, you'll be fine. <laughs> I'm going to do it, and hopefully this shirt will come out really well, and if it doesn't, that's okay. And I'm going to forgive myself because I'm actually... I'm also going to pat myself on the back. This is something that you might need to do for yourself as well, is I'm recognizing that I knew that this would be harder, and I chose fabric that was scrap left over from another project. So I've already used this fabric and had a successful thing. This is me using it as scrap so that I can learn how to do the hard pattern. And if it comes out crappy, it's okay. It's not brand new fabric that I bought. I have that as well. I'll do that on the second round. So then it's just rewarding yourself, I guess, to remind yourself of the smart decisions you're making and why what you're doing, like, you're not dumb. You know what you're doing. And that it also can be good feedback and help you keep on track and keep going, even when you want to sabotage yourself and not do it. I'm reminded that I had worked with a coach about business stuff and business plans and advertising, all that stuff. And one of the questions she asked was like, what are the ways that you're self-sabotaging? Like, and would you write them down? What are like all of the ways that you could possibly stop yourself from getting what you want and doing the thing that you know you need to do so that you can just look at it in writing and see what it is. And that just was such an eye opener for me because I knew exactly what it was that I was going to do or not do. And then I knew what it would look like. And as soon as I knew what it would look like, I was able to say, no, I'm not going to choose that today. Because when we don't recognize it as a choice that we're making, and make it really obvious for ourselves, it's very easy to subconsciously just go with what we think feels better or the excuse that we have because it's ready-made excuse and that's just what we want to do. So if you write it down and go, oh, I'm not going to accept that as an excuse any longer, that's empowering and it feels really good to go like, oh, but I have that choice and I'm going to show up fiercely in favor of myself and getting the thing done that I chose to get done. I'm choosing it and I'm not letting myself choose the easy out, which is my automatic default. And I don't want to do that. Try it out and see what happens. I think you'd be surprised. It's really, really fun. Mm, yes. So how are you self-sabotaging? What are the things that you're allowing to get in the way of completing whatever it is that you want to complete? And how are you going to get around that today? And what is the feedback that you've been giving yourself or that you've been tuning into and what are you making it mean about your ability to handle it? Isn't that an interesting question? Because I think when we make it mean that it's hard or that anyone would have trouble, which is something that I hear myself say, like anyone would be having trouble with this. I don't want to be anyone. I want to be me <laughs> and I want to get past it anyway. And that's empowering too. And I know that you can also have those thoughts and find the one that makes you feel fierce in defense of what you've chosen in defense of what you want to create, or not even in defense of, like in favor of, fiercely in favor of your own development, of your own success, and that you're protecting that instead of defending the reasons why it's safe to fail, to give up, to ignore, and to delay. Mm, stuff to think about. May you have a fantastic week and notice all those moments where you're letting a, a usual program of thought trip you up. And if you notice that you're tripping or that you're slowing down, or that's the wall that you always hit, start to be curious and go, huh, I wonder what I could do differently. I wonder if I could fiercely overcome this because I choose it because I want to, what, what's possible for me? What would I have to do? in order to see a different result than what I'm seeing now. Because this is also true. Like we're seeing the result of what we've allowed, what we've tolerated. We're seeing the result of where we get tripped up. And if we want to stop getting tripped up there, we have to decide that there is another way or that we have more motivation, like more energy available to us than what's what we've allowed up to this point. So we can look at this obstacle or the thing that's difficult and go, you know what? It's okay. I'm going to get it done. And this is why. And I'm going to feel great about it. And that's a choice too. 
So I think that's another thing I'm reminding myself. I'm about to wrap this up and go tackle some some cutting of the fabric to go, I am choosing to get this done. I'm realizing I have more energy than I want to admit. I know that as soon as I press the end record button, I'm going to come up with an excuse. Like I absolutely know I'll be like, oh, it's time to go get a drink. Maybe you should go see your family. And that will come to my mind. And then I'm going to remind myself, but if you take 10 minutes and just cut the next two things, you're on your way. You can start making this pattern like tomorrow. You could get your sewing machine out and like be on the next stage. Isn't that worth it? And to that, I say yes. Mm. May your projects somehow progress to the next stage very, very soon. And may you find that fierceness within you to tackle it. Have an awesome week and I'll see you next time. Thanks so much for joining me. If you enjoyed this podcast, please subscribe and share it with someone you love and leave us a review. You can learn more and get some self-compassion tips and tricks by visiting coachwithblaze.com where you can sign up to get my free booklet on overcoming anxiety, overwhelm, exhaustion, and burnout. I'm sending you so much appreciation and love, and I'll see you next time.